Hello and thanks for tuning into Dot Slash. This is the part two video for Nix OS. If you haven't seen the first video on how it works and how to install it, click the link up in the screen now or in the description and go have a look at that first if that interests you. Otherwise, I'm going to carry on with this portion. Unfortunately, the laptop I was going to use for the hardware demo won't display the Grub or SystemD menus through the HDMI port and it won't display anything until you've booted up and it's loaded the graphics driver. So I'm going to use a virtual machine instead, which is EFI enabled. And there's one quick way that you can tell if your system that you're currently using is indeed booted through EFI. And that is by checking to see if this folder exists. Another quick way, if you do have the package installed is to run EFI boot manager and it will show you the available EFI options. So let's jump right into it here. I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to attach the virtual disk for NixOS and boot it back up again. Now this is the EFI boot menu for the installer ISO. So we'll start that up. So here I am booted into the live environment. I'm not gonna go over every single step again. I did all that in the last video, so you can go have a look at that. And then I'm just gonna go through the differences here in a traditional MBR BIOS system and a EFI system. If we look at Gparted, you could see here that I have Debian installed. It has the EFI partition and a small partition. One thing you'll always wanna note on your system is what your partitions are called and what your device is called. So my disk here is slash dev slash VDA and the partitions are one, two, and three. First things first, we're gonna make some room to install a Nix OS partition. Using Gparted makes it super easy. So I'm gonna resize here. And I've, this is a virtual machine, so I'm not really concerned about leaving a ton of room to do anything because I'm just going to delete this virtual machine when I'm done anyways. So I'm giving myself X amount of room. This is totally up to you how much you want to give yourself. And I'm gonna make a new partition and let's just label it NixOS. Add that, apply, and let it run. And we're done, so close this. You can leave this open just so you have reference as to what devices you're gonna need to reference later on. Let's do a quick skim through the installation here, installing NixOS. We still need to mount our partitions so that we can do the installation. We can skip the partitioning portion, both of them here. Formatting, we can skip that because it's already done. And we're gonna move on to the installing. Open up your console. And again, just like in the last video to make things easy, do a sudo su to make yourself root. Now we're gonna mount the main NixOS partition. Dev, disk, by label, NixOS. I also did this in the first video. However, if you want to use the partition names, you can. So dev VDA, just change this to slash dev slash VDA4. Don't forget the number at the end. And we're gonna put that in mount. Next, because we are using EFI, we're gonna do a make directory P, so it creates the whole path, mount boot. And then we mount that. Again, let's use the actual partition name, which in this case is slash dev slash VDA1. And put it in slash mount slash boot. Here we can activate the swap partition. If you didn't create one before and you decide you want one, you can always add it. So the swap in my system is VDA3. Now it's going to generate our configuration file, just like last time. Our configuration file has been generated and now we can edit it. If you remember in the last video, I mentioned that if you're running an EFI system, it will automatically generate the systemd boot enable equals true for you. And you can see that here. Now you can leave this here if you want to, but we're gonna do grub and a dual boot in this case. So I'm gonna comment this out. Just do a hash and a space if you want to. And now to get grub working, I'm gonna add a few lines and these will be down in the description below. So you can just copy and paste them. We're gonna leave this first line up here, can touch EFI variables to true. And we're gonna add a few lines here. 
Now with all these lines included, this will create a system with Grub on EFI. We've added this line here so that Grub will use OS Prober to look for other distros or operating systems on your computer when it updates Grub. You don't have to enable this if you only have Nix OS, but it doesn't hurt to enable it, especially if in the future you decide to add another distro, this is already set up for you. I'm gonna configure the rest now with a Plasma desktop. I've already done all this in the previous video, so I'm gonna skim through this part. And now with my configuration done, same as last time, Control O, enter to save, Control X to exit, and then we're going to do a Nix OS install and let it run. Now we're done. We're gonna enter the root password just like before, and now we can shut down. One thing you may have to do with your system on hardware is go into your BIOS when your system is booting up and then go into your boot settings and change which EFI it's gonna boot up with because in this case, I had Debian installed, which means it's gonna try and boot Debian more than likely. So you have to go in and change it to the new Nix OS bootloader. You'll have to look up your laptop or PC to find out which key it is to get in there. It's delete or F12 or F9 or F2, it just depends on your system. Go ahead and shut down, remove your bootable media, and then start it up again. Now with this virtual machine, like some of the systems out there, it just automatically picked up the new EFI and booted that straight up. So you can see here, there's the NixOS Grub menu, just like in the last video, and it also added Debian because it detected it using OS Prober. If I hit enter, it should just boot right in. Debian login screen, so reboot again. And let's go into NixOS this time. And remember, just like in the last video, your user does not have a password yet. So go into the terminal with Control Alt F something and log in as root and give yourself a password. And here we are now running KDE Plasma on NixOS alongside of Debian. You can do this with as many operating systems as you can. I've had up to 10 distros on my system at once. Now, if you already had NixOS installed and you wanted to install something else alongside NixOS, you can do the same thing just in reverse. You're going to install your new operating system in a new partition. So shrink down your NixOS partition, install there. And when you reboot, you may have to go into the settings I was talking about so that the Nix OS EFI boots up first. It's really important to boot into the Nix OS bootloader because that's how you'll be able to choose different generations. And this will allow you to roll back and upgrade and so on and still access your other distros. Now, hopefully this helped you out with getting a system up and running and dual booting with Nix OS. Now there's one thing that I need to point out. As I showed you earlier when we were first installing it, this is the default, but then I added this and commented out this. What I have done is installed it as system D, and then after it was installed and up and running, I then edited this to instead boot from Grub. I ran the NixOS rebuild switch, rebooted, went into Grub, and everything was fine. However, it's not quite the same if you want to go from Grub to system D boot. For some reason, going from system D boot to Grub is fine, but going from Grub to system D boot doesn't really work. If you want to use Grub, since most people do, this isn't really a problem, just start off with Grub. But if you're thinking of switching to system D boot in the future, you might want to do that first. Well, I hope that this got your system up and running. Like I mentioned before, I do have a system on hardware and I can't show you the Grub menu of it booting up, but here it is here running dual boot UEFI system. And as you can see, this is on hardware. And if you have a look in the slash boot slash EFI folder, you could see the Debian and NixOS boot entries. And I think there's room for one more NixOS video covering a bit more on the package management and how you can do different things since I only briefly touched on it at the beginning of the install video. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, click on like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share it on your social media. And remember to hit the little bell so you get notifications of when I push out new videos. Huge shout out to my past, present, and future patrons. 
And if you would like to support my channel and help me support the Linux community, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, bash on.